Hello, everyone. Seems to be a bit dark in here, doesn't it? Well, uh, don't worry, I've got it covered. I hope the organizers and the uh, uh, cultural government security uh, people will soon for this. Ladies and gentlemen, now that you can see me a little bit better, this is what you call, for those of you uh, who are not aware, a lab, or in other words, a goopy lab. Now, why did I not simply ask the organizers to turn on the lights when I came in and make such a big drama of it? That's because I wanted you to experience what at least 10% of people in Sri Lanka and millions of people around the world go through every day when the sun goes down. Ladies and gentlemen, this is because they do not have access to electricity or electricity is too expensive for them to afford. Now that latter uh, phrase is something that most of you would have heard from your parents. <laughs> well, thankfully we have such, an, such a great uh, bunch of organizers who have gone through great pains to ensure that we have uninterruptible power. Therefore, without further ado, I call. Let there be that. <laughs> well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are well and truly at an energy crisis. This is because there is simply not enough electricity to power all your iPhones, your, uh, your, your cell phones, your TVs, your water heaters. No, because in Sri Lanka, we have so far tapped into every single available hydropower resource. The only other option, the cheaper option available, is the more environmentally devastating coal and uh, heavy fuel power plants. Now, as you all know, these emit carbon dioxide to the environment and could be devastating in the long run. But unfortunately, we have no other option. So why all this talk about the energy crisis? That is because, ladies and gentlemen, I have set out in my own small way to try and solve this energy crisis through a concept that I call wireless lighting through an organization I founded called Empower Lanka. Now, what exactly is Empower Lanka? Ladies and gentlemen, Empower Lanka gives wireless uh, micro off-grid solar power units to rural villages uh, for free of charge. Micro off-grid power units and then wireless lighting, these are all big words. So let me explain to you. First off, I'll start with what grid electricity is. Now, grid electricity is what all of you, uh, I'm 100% certain, are familiar with. As you all know, Sri Lanka has quite a few uh, power stations around the country, and these power stations are connected together. This, in turn, forms a grid. Now, this grid, uh, now all the other houses in, in, uh, that you are living is, in turn, connected to this grid, and thereby, you receive grid electricity. Now, off-grid electricity, ladies and gentlemen, is whereby uh, you take off the main grid of all the power stations, and you install uh, autonomous power generation units to all the houses or villages. Thereby, you basically go off the grid, and this concept is called off-grid electrification. However, Empower Lanka took this concept a little further by, by what we call wireless lighting. Now, the nerds out there might uh, say that wireless lighting died with the infamous Nikola Tesla. Well, yes, uh, but I'm not pretending to be as smart as Nikola Tesla or as great as uh, he was. For one thing, he's for off women or the fairer, uh, fairer sex, and that's something none of the guys here, I'm sure, would ever even dream of doing. Well, um, I, you're all going to accuse me of building up this anticipation for nothing, because wireless lighting is a very simple concept. Before I tell you about wireless lighting, let me uh, give you an in, 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 uh, let me give you a little insight into the rural villages of Sri Lanka. You see, in these villages, the houses are very much far apart, sometimes even more than a kilometer. Therefore, even if we install a solar power generation unit in the village, transmitting that energy to the individual houses would mean a huge loss on the way, because as you, uh, in basic physics, we learn that when uh, it's all the wires have resistance, and to overcome resistance, you need en energy, and this energy is lost. So we wanted to do away with these wires, and what we did is we devised this concept of wireless lighting. Now, what you see in the picture in the middle is actually a rechargeable lighting unit. And we also installed a charging station at the center of the village. Now, during the daytime, the villages from far apart 
uh, from their own houses, come and charge their lighting units from the rechargeable charging station. And during the night, they take it to their houses. And again, in the morning, they bring it back because uh, the batteries will be depleted. And, and uh, this process goes on uh, for as long as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, that was an absolutely simple concept. But that is something that solves the energy loss through the wires that we went through. Now, uh, that is what, uh, what a uh, basic, uh, a wireless, uh, sorry, rechargeable lighting unit is actually quite huge in size. And you get to see a little picture of it. Uh, now, now that we had a concept that works with a catchy name and everything, how did I get the volunteers to come and help out uh, to go to the most remotest parts of Sri Lanka? Well, that was easy. What I noticed uh, while uh, organizing Youth is a World World Record, which most of you would have been part of, is that the Sri Lankan youth, and as a matter of fact, all the youth in, in, in the world are very much keen on helping, giving something back to the society, and therefore, I also had a bunch of friends who, were, who fell into this category. So all I needed to do was to bribe them with a little bit of a good lunch. And then they agreed to come with me to the most rural places in Sri Lanka. Well, after this, uh, the, uh, the message started to spread. This was a new concept. And lots of people wanted to volunteer. And we have uh, never had a shortage of volunteers so far. Now, the funding concept was a little bit more complicated. No one wanted to give us uh, a few hundred thousand rupees for a concept uh, that that usually the government is uh, is more keen on doing, or some a huge organization such as the World Bank. Well, thankfully for us, we had the British Council uh, Global Change Makers Program. They gave us a small startup grant, and using this, we powered one village. Thereby, using this uh, uh, this funding again, we used the advertising and uh, the work, the photos we did uh, in this first uh, project to further apply for a larger grant. Which gave uh, from the American embassy, and that was up to one million rupees. And with this money, we powered yet four more villages. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Empower Lanka also has another card up its sleeve. This is called the Sponsor a Village Program. With the Sponsor a Village Program, the corporate sector can get involved in empowering a village because we give them a list of uh, predetermined villages that do not have access to electricity and let them choose. Uh, which village they want to power. Thereby, we give them an opportunity to be part of a great corporate social, respons uh, corporate, uh, social responsibly, responsible project. And also, we receive, uh, we, we give them a certificate uh, listing down the amount of carbon dioxide that they saved by powering that village with the electricity generated through solar power. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, so Empower Lanka so far has powered 115 houses, 263 people have received access to electricity, and 67 children I know are studying with the lamps that are powered by our systems at this very moment. And that I, I, I hope uh, to believe uh, would be doing their homework for tomorrow. Speaking of homework, I wonder uh, how many of you did your homework on the TEDx speakers here tonight. I'm sure I would be the last person that you would have done your homework. But uh, from my introduction, you would at least uh, uh, know that uh, I would be pretty much well off doing uh, what I do as a lawyer, or just sitting in my corner making a few documents. But no, I did not want to stop there, because I believe that success, which can be measured through your academic or social or professional qualifications, is different from excellence. Excellence, ladies and uh, gentlemen, I believe, is going the extra mile, doing something for the society, helping a stranger that you have never met before, shedding your sweat, blood, and tears for that stranger. Now, great people such as Einstein, Mahatma Gandhi, or Martin Luther King are people who have achieved excellence. The rest of us, however, would only be ever trying to achieve excellence and never really achieving excellence, even though one day we will achieve success, because success can be measured through your academic and uh, monetary qualifications. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what really inspires me more than my academic qualifications, or I'm sure most of you would agree with me, are the smiles that are brought by my project. Uh, I, the, it, it helps me sleep soundly at night, to use a very common exp uh, uh, expression. And uh, I, uh, with the knowledge that some people out there have uh, electricity through the Empower Lanka solar power generation units. Now, these smiles lead me 
to give you, to present to you what I call the excellence equation. It's a very humble uh, summary of what I just said. Uh, this can be put into E equals MC square. I seem to be insulting a lot of physicists today. First it was Nikola Tesla, and now it's Einstein. But in this equation, the letters stand uh, for very different concept, concepts. Uh, M is merriment or happiness, for the lack of a word to fit into M, and C, <laughs> and C is actually contentment. Now both happiness and contentment are things that, due to the human nature, we can never be satisfied with. We are always in the pursuit of more and more happiness and more and more excellence, uh, sorry, contentment. Therefore, excellence will also continue to be undefined. And therefore, all of you would be staying in a pursuit of excellence and never really achieving excellence due to the human nature. Now, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to conclude by saying, by urging you to not stop at your academic qualifications, at your monetary achievements, the amount of money you have, the great cars you drive, no. Always move a bit further, because if you pursue excellence, I believe success will follow. Thank you.